Hello everybody, Jason with Learn Survive. Hope you guys are doing well, staying safe, taking care of yourself, and more importantly, taking care of one another. So about a month, month and a half ago, I made a video that I was going to be back trying to do videos uh, on a normal schedule, and that didn't happen. I feel like I lied to you all, and that was not my intention to lie to you or not even make the video. But, you know what, the wind kind of got taken out of my sails. It's not that I don't care about you people. I do care about you, and I love each and every one of you that view my channel, watch my videos, comment, send me emails, ask me questions, whether it is in the comment section or emails. But I'm on multiple social media platforms, multiple times a day, keeping up with news and gathering information and trying to uh, put things together and bring you... Uh, videos that might be of some important um, and not just product reviews well being on these platforms um, and interacting with like-minded people and stuff like that eventually you start getting bashed because of your religious views your political views or whatever now that don't bother me so much because I'm a tough skinned motherfucker and comments like that it rolls off my Rolls off me like water off a duck's ass. Okay. Um, what got me is the shit these people are saying. And the fact that they actually believe the shit that's coming out of their fucking mouths. And the shit that's being spoon fed to them like it's the truth from God Almighty himself. Um, good case in point. Um. Hillary didn't do anything wrong with her email server and classified emails, but Trump bad because of this and that. Or um, Hunter's computer, even though verified as legitimate, is Russian disinformation because somebody with a certain name in a high up office said so. So, the, you know, that's the word of God to some of these people. And it becomes very disheartening and it just got me to the point where I said, you know what? I need a break. So I just kind of got away from the internet for a while. The only thing I'd done was check my emails and check any comments left on YouTube and tried to keep up with them. With that being said, let's get into the point of the video. I received an email from a viewer asking me what I recommend well there's a lot of knives I could recommend but you didn't give me enough information on what you wanted that for um, do you want it as honey is it a hunting knife is it a survival knife a general utility knife a fighting knife a self-defense knife these are all things that I need to know but since I don't know them I made a selection of knives that I would recommend to everybody. And there's one, even though I recommend it to everybody, I would not recommend it to everybody. It has an all around do everything knife. And I'll explain why. Now, one knife I didn't pick that I have absolutely love for is the Buck 119, and that's hanging up on the wall, but everybody. If you've went through my videos, you know I love the Buck 119 knife. Um, so, we're going to exclude that one. And get on with the video here. If you're wanting a knife for personal protection, um, I recommend the Cold Steel Steel Tiger Crombit. This is a good knife, good solid knife, good solid knife for self-defense. Eat lightweight, easy to use. I mean, yes, there is a technique for karambits and fighting with a karambit, but you don't have to know that technique. You know, you don't have to be some martial art expert, and especially with the size and shape of this one and the way it fits in the hand when you draw it out the sheath. You're in this position right here. It is very easy to just stab and curl up and pull up on somebody great knife um, yeah, yeah. 
I just can't say enough about this one. Another knife that I like that I recommend if you want something that's going to be a smaller um, knife that is fit for a survival knife, it is fit for a combat knife, it is fit for a camp knife, is going to be the Gerber Strong Arm. Now, this knife is about the same as the Prodigy. Uh, very little size difference in the two. And just the pommel tip right here is a little bit different. But the reason I choose this one is because of the sheath option. And it is also authorized by the Department of Defense for military use. Now, the sheath you can carry on a belt. Or you can remove this whole belt hanger. And it has a piece that goes through these... Uh, little spots here that allow you to carry it horizontally um, on you or in molly webbing or even uh, in, in a scout carry. Uh, another knife I recommend for a general uh, utility knife and even a hunting knife and this one is a folder is the Buck 110. This knife's been around since the 50s. It's an iconic knife. Um, plus side with this knife. Um, if you're out in public and you need to cut something, nobody's going to bat an eye ab about this one because most people, their dads, their grandpas had this knife. This can be used for uh general cutting purposes, anything from your food um, to hunting. This is what the knife was designed for, really was a foldable small hunting knife. You can definitely um, skin and field dress a deer with this and do most of the processing out of a deer with it. Um, and there again, carrying it in public, nobody's going to bat an eye because, like I said, their dad, their grandpa, their uncle, their brother had one. Now, as far as a general use, an all-around use knife from everything from camp tasks to a fighting knife, is the Cold Steel 1917 Oh. Now, even though this is labeled as and sold as a cold steel knife, it is made by Windless in India, and Windless is an amazing company. They do uh, swords and knives for a company called Museum Replicas. They are very high quality. They do knives for movies and stuff like that. They are also the official knife maker for the Kukris of the Indian Army in the British Army. And if you get one of these, it comes with proof papers for the proofing of the knife. Now, I recommend this as an all-around knife to some people, and I don't to others, and I'm going to explain why. This is a very big knife you're looking at. About a 12 inch blade on it. It's very thick. As you can see, yes, that's a thick ass spine. And it is very heavy. So if you were going to use this as a fighting knife, you're going to have to have some skills and have some knife fighting training or some swordsmanship training. Or be a really big guy, because if you're not, you're going to be really slow with this knife. But as an outdoors knife, this knife would be tough to beat. You can use it as a small machete. You can very easily hack through... Uh, I'm, I don't want to say small or medium-sized branches, because... That may be a difference of opinion on what small and medium is. Um, but uh, I, I've chopped down trees with it that were 
about that big around for poles to uh, make a uh, pot stand with, a uh, pot tripod. Um, you know, but as far as an outdoor world wilderness knife, this one's going to be definitely hard to beat. I mean, it is going to be what it is. One thing you definitely couldn't do with it is field dress an animal. It is way too big, way too heavy uh, for that. And the chances of you actually because of the weight and the way it balances of getting that tip down and cutting something or puncturing something you don't want to cut or puncture, that's going to ruin your meat. No bueno. But overall, a very solid, I would call this a woodsman's knife. Uh, just for that reason, um, it's just a great knife. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to end this video. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I will talk to you guys real soon. Please like and subscribe and leave me some comments. I really do like reading your comments and interacting with you people.